Hello, shiny people. It's Allie from Geek and Fairy Tarot, and I just wanted to do an update on my geeky or nerdy deck collection. I did a video a couple of years ago sharing my nerdy pop culture deck collection, but my collection has since grown and I have acquired a few more decks over the last couple of years. So I wanted to just give you an update and share with you the new decks that I've acquired and give you just a quick overview of some of my favorite things or my least favorite things about each of these decks and just showcase some of the pop culture decks that are out there on the market if that's the kind of thing that you're into and let you know what my thoughts are on each of these individual decks. So this is the last unicorn tarot based on the story The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Spiegel. And all of the imagery is from the animated movie, The Last Unicorn. I love the backs of the card. I love that the little butterfly that shows up right at the beginning of the movie is the back. And I love that the backs are, the, are reversible, the same no matter which way they're facing, upside down or right side up. I love the feel of the cards like they're not they're not glossy and they're not sticky like I know a lot of those glossy cards they kind of stick together when you first get them but these ones aren't like that they're quite thick the cardstock is quite thick I love the gold borders and the gold edges it is a really really nicely put together deck It is very heavy um, it's a little bit larger than your average tarot deck, just slightly larger, um, but it's very much thicker, very thick and quite heavy. Like this is one of the heaviest decks uh, I have ever held. The only exception, I think one being heavier is my Pokemon tarot, which I will share with you next. Um, it's pretty easy to shuffle, except that, you know, except for the thickness, just to just holding the cards in both hands. Um, I did a, a walkthrough video. I just uploaded it a couple days. I don't have too much to say in terms of working with this deck because I've only had it for a few days and I haven't had a lot of time to work with it. But I'll just flip through some of the images here. And of course, I shuffled them so they're all mixed up. But the uh, artwork is done by five different artists. So there was an artist assigned to each suit, including the majors. But I love the artwork. I think the artwork is very well done, very in line with the, the movie's animation style. You do see a little bit, you can tell um, the different art styles, they vary slightly, but still in keeping with the tone of the movie. As I said, I haven't had a chance to work with this deck too, too much yet, but I anticipate that the, cord card, the court cards are gonna be the hardest um, to work with and interpret, but I really like what they've done with the majors and the pips seem to fit really, really well if you're used to a Rider Waite Smith deck. I'll just show you a few more images and then we'll go on to the next. Four one. Okay. So that is the last unicorn tarot. And here is the Poke Box. It's called the Poke Box Tarot, not the Pokemon Tarot. I think the creator's uh, store is called Poke Box, so that's why it's the Poke Box Tarot. So it's all fan art. I don't think this is properly licensed, but I have to say that the artwork, the fan art, if you like Pokemon fan art, this is pretty incredible. I Even if you don't like Pokemon, I think you can appreciate the artwork in these cards and the borders are quite they're quite fancy they're quite amazing again it's got like the gold accents the edges aren't gold they're just white but you get this really beautiful beautiful deck and they're textured I don't know if you can hear it but they have this texture to it they're very thick cards like almost bordering on like a, a backer board but look how thick this deck is. Like it's quite thick and it's quite long. Like there is no way you can do like a bridge shuffle with these cards. You have to 
you have to shuffle them like this. There's no other way. They're super awkward. So if I have one complaint about this deck, it is the size of the cards. that They're just awkward to handle. Really tricky to shuffle. Um, that is the only thing I don't like about this deck. But I think this deck has been well researched. I think the Pokemon that are signed to each card is very fitting. I think the artwork is absolutely incredible. So I'm extremely thrilled to have this deck in my collection. This is someone who knows tarot and knows Pokemon very well. And it's an indie deck, so you have to buy from the creator. I think I got it on Society6. If anyone's interested in any of these decks, just leave a comment below and I'll post the link as to where you can purchase them. Okay, I'll just flip over a few more and we'll go on to the next deck. All right, so that is the Pokebox Tarot deck. So here we have the Alice Tarot. This is a Bubba Studios deck. It's a collector's item, limited edition. This is the second edition. I didn't get my hands on a first edition, so I was super excited when they put out a second edition and I jumped on the chance to get, because I, I love this deck. I just want the deck because I like the theme and I like the artwork and I like the story so I wasn't as concerned with sort of the value of it even though it is probably one of the most expensive decks that I currently own. Now the cardstock is a little bit thinner but it makes it easy to shuffle. It, it does have sort of that shiny gold to the back and I love that it's got the uh, all the suits from the playing cards on it. I love the artwork. I love that this deck challenges me a little bit. Like there's things as I go through the cards, there's things that pop up from the Alice stories through the Looking Glass and Alice in Wonderland that I've forgotten. Like little things like um, the rocking horse fly and stuff like that. The the, I, that might be a mock turtle I can't remember but just little things like that like oh yeah just things that show up very briefly in the story um, that made their way into the card so I like that there's a lot of variety in this deck I like that the story it fits quite well like so far I haven't I haven't encountered too many cards that are difficult to interpret or don't seem to fit a traditional um Rider weight deck. I think they match the story to the meaning of the cards quite well. There are a few repeat characters, but that's okay. I find that they are all where they need to be. But I do love the artwork. I am a huge Alice fan. You'd think I'd be more of a, a Peter Pan fan with the fairies and the pirates, because I love fairies, and I love mermaids, and I love pirates, but for some reason, Wonderland has always intrigued me more than Neverland, and I don't know why. That's something I've always been curious, curious, curiouser and curiouser about why that would be. Um, just something to know about me, I guess, some random trivia. But it is a really it's a beautiful deck, and I've enjoyed using it so far. King of Swords, the, the Red King, Kittens, and I love the box that it comes in. I love these nice, small, but durable boxes. All right, so that is the Alice Tarot. Oh yeah, one thing that I wanted to mention about this deck is that this deck comes with two lovers cards. So the first lover's card, we have the walrus and the carpenter. And I 
still don't know how I feel about that, calling them the lovers. I, I think I need to do a little bit of, um, not introspection, but just some thought, spend some time thinking about this, because I don't know why, you know, I don't really think of them as lovers. They're sort of scheming friends, and I don't know how that fits in with the lovers. And they certainly didn't give the oysters a whole lot of choice. <laughs> <laughs> and they sort of duped them, tricked them into their own deaths. So I think maybe the creator had some self-doubts about making these two the lovers as well. And so there is an alternate lovers card. This deck came with two lovers cards. So we have the, the flamingos from the croquet game that Alice played with the queen. So I'm not... I want to have the walrus and carpenter in the deck. So I've, ca I've decided to keep this card in there I just haven't quite figured out its meaning to me yet I suppose I just wanted to add that little side note I don't know what what are your thoughts on the lovers card do you guys have a preference let me know in the comments so this is the tv series tarot and I know a lot of people aren't impressed with this deck and I think it's because the artwork there was a lot of um the artwork with the exception of only a very small, like a handful of the cards fit the actual characters from the show. Like you can tell that the artist deliberately did not do them in the likeness of the TV characters, like the actors. They're very different, but still tried to have enough symbols and references that the show was identifiable. And I think people are frustrated because it's really hard to tell sometimes what the TV show is like this one. There's a lot of doctor TV shows and a lot of like law and mystery or crime, crime TV shows. And so those are all in there. And it's really hard, especially when you can't draw in the likeness of the characters to guess one crime show from another crime show or one medical show from another medical show. So that is one thing I think that's a little bit frustrating about this deck. Other shows are a little more easy to identify even though their faces don't match the characters. Like this one is Charmed, for example, is pretty easily identifiable. There's Tarzan. Um, this one is Game of Thrones. This is one of the few characters that actually look like the character in the TV show. There's only maybe three to five of them in this whole deck. There's another crime one. Like some of them are very difficult to tell. Others are quite obvious. Um, it is it is a fun deck. Um, I haven't used it too too much. There like I said, one thing I don't like about it is that it's sometimes really hard to tell one TV show from another when the themes of the show are so similar. There's Empire, there's Dead Like Me. There is one card in this deck that has stumped everyone I know. And every time I go to a convention, I ask people. So if anyone out there knows, I've even tried emailing the creator to ask what TV show is this card from? Because through the internet and Everybody putting it out there online, talking to people on social media, complete strangers, and no one seems to know what this is. So maybe I'll hold it up. You can see the character. He's got kind of this, it's very dated because you can tell if you look at the computer, it is not a new computer and there are cigarettes on the desk. So that tells you that this came from, you know, the 80s or early 90s, especially looking at the haircut. I apologize for my silly camera. Oh, there we go. Oh, we had it for just a split second. This is the page of cups. And I think that's why he's holding the goldfish bowl. I don't know if it's relevant to the show or not, or just a symbol of being the page of cups. So he's got a coffee mug, some papers on a desk, a computer, a water bottle, and there are, he's got headphones on. Um, so there's sort of this hint that maybe he works in a studio, but then you have like the boards so it, behind, so it could be, um, 
I don't know, it's either some sort of like film studio, workshop, radio, or an office. And I can't quite tell who it is, what it is. I have Googled as much as I can. I cannot figure out this TV show. And I watch a lot of TV. I watch a lot of modern TV. I've watched, watched a lot of retro TV. And I am completely stumped. So anyone out there who knows, please let me know what TV show this is from. Because the guidebook, the little white book that comes with this deck, doesn't tell you what TV shows are for what card. And it's probably because there is some trademark copyright reasons for that. Anyway, it's your standard mass-produced, mass-market deck. So you get the standard little white book in multiple languages. Um, it's kind of fun, but it's a little bit frustrating when you can't identify the TV shows that the cards are supposed to represent. So that's my one big complaint about this, this deck here. Here is the Happy Tarot I think this deck is really fun. I think the images are really cute. It's called the Happy Tarot, and it is, it lives up to its name. It is really hard not to feel happy when you use this deck. You have to smile at every card. I mean, look at that devil. He's just, he's cute. You can't help but smile. And so in each card, there's this kind of a candy land theme. You see little lollipops and ice cream cones in just about every single card, little bonbons, uh, and it's just, it just makes you feel cute and happy and warm, and I love it. This is a good deck for kids. If you want to give a deck to a child who wants, is interested in learning tarot, I think this is a really cute and appropriate deck for kids. I think it's really fun. I do include it in my geeky readings. I classify it under geek just because of that Candyland theme and because the characters are drawn in that really sort of cute chibi manga style. Not quite manga, but it's very close. Um, it's a very chibi cutesy, cutesy style and with the Candyland thing added on top of it, I think it can fit. It can fit geeks, uh, in my opinion. Others might disagree, but I think it's really fun. I think it's really cute. And so it's it's there as an option, and I really enjoy it. The imagery is very close to Rider Waite Smith, so you could easily, if you can stomach or tolerate the the imagery, and it, it isn't so cute that it, it makes you sick, um, and it's your sort of style. I think you could easily pick up this deck and read with it. It's easy. It's easy to read. That is the Happy Tarot. This is the Shadow Hunters Tarot deck. This deck does not come with a guidebook. You just get the deck and you, you also get this um, velvet bag with the uh, angel rune on it, the angelic rune. So that, that's basically what you get. It's not an expensive deck. You can buy it online. It's based on the stories by Cassandra Clare in her Shadowhunters series. Multiple series. That's multiple series. <laughs> I know series isn't a word, but I had to emphasize it. It's more than one series. Um, so there's characters of different locations and different, same world, different times, different places, basically. Each card has a character from one of the books on it. So if you're familiar with the characters, it is pretty, pretty easy to read the cards. Um, there are four suits that differ from your standard tarot deck. There are blades, which are the swords. There are rings, which are the pentacles, would be the pentacles. There are extra majors in this deck. I think it has three extra majors making it a deck of 81. Yeah, 81 cards. So here, and they renamed quite a few of them. So Julian Blackthorn, Thor, Julian Blackthorn is the artist rather than the emperor, but you can tie in some emperor meanings if you know the character. He does fit. The runes are the cups. Um, the runes give 
the shadow hunters different abilities and so a lot of them tie in with feelings as well as abilities which oh the steles steles or steelies i can still can't get that word right <laughs> are the suit of wands So the artwork is by Cassandra Jean, which does a lot of the artwork for um, Cassandra Clare's sort of companion books. If you're a collector of Shadowhunter gear and Shadowhunter merchandise, you probably want this in, in your collection. There's a bit of a learning curve with this one, but again, if you're very familiar with the books and the stories, you shouldn't have too much issue using this. There is a lot of deviation in this deck from a standard Rider Waite deck. So here we have the Lycanthropes in place of the Moon card, for example. So that is the Shadowhunters tarot. Now if you recognize this symbol, you'll know that that is the Triforce from the Legend of Zelda games, and you would be right, this is the Legend of Tarot, not the Legend of Zelda Tarot. Again, this is an indie, indie deck, you could buy it on Etsy, and the creators were very, very careful not to use any of the character names, place names, object names, anything like that, anything that would tie it to the Nintendo game obviously to avoid copyright and trademark infringements. It comes with a Happy Squirrel card, which is super cool, and I think Midna fits the Happy Squirrel meaning quite well. She's, it was very well placed, well thought of. Um, the card stock is a lot like your standard mass-produced Llewellyn decks. It's, it's very flexible, very thin, um, but it's held up pretty good. I've been using this deck for a couple of years, and it's still in pretty good shape. Now, there are some issues I don't like about this deck. Um, one is the colors of the borders, I find, throw me off. I kind of wish either they had just stuck with one color or had assigned it uh, better to each each suit. So for example, here's what I don't like. So we have the suit of sticks and the suit of swords. The suit of swords is the fire suit and the suit of sticks is the sword, sorry, the air suit. And okay, so fire, we have a red border that works if you're going to assign fire to swords, which I don't like. To me, swords are air and wands are fire and that's how it should be. But here they have green for the sticks, I guess, to tie it in with that, because a lot of the characters come from the forest, like the Kokiri and the Deku tribes. And it just throws me off, because green to me is an earth color. Um, and for rupees, so rupees would be in place of the pentacles, which would be, be the suit of earth. Um, they've made it purple. And so I just find it a little bit confusing to me. It kind of messes with my brain a little bit. I have to sort of stop and, and think about things a little bit harder before I read because I sort of go to my auto, auto interpretation sometimes. And this one really just, I have to mix up fire and air and earth all the time. And it really, it just messes with my brain. And I don't like it. That's one thing I don't like about this deck. But if you are familiar with the games and the characters, and if, especially if you're more of an intuitive reader, you shouldn't have a problem with this deck. It should be pretty easy. Um, the guidebook that comes with this deck, they did write a guidebook, but it's in PDF form, so you have to download it um, and print it, I guess, if you prefer printed material. I don't mind. Um, reading from a computer that doesn't bother me at all so that's fine with me. The other thing is the the rupees and the bottles. So bottles is the if I can find one there we go. Bottles is the the water element, the water suit are just like a rider weight deck. They're very 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 similar. However, the sticks and the swords tend to 
crisscross over. Sometimes the Six of Swords is the Six of Swords, sometimes it's the Six of Wands, and sometimes it's its own thing. Like, not specifically, but like, I get, I'm just using the Six as an example. So sometimes they match up, sometimes they cross over to the other suit in the, if you were to line them up with a Rider Waite Smith deck, and other times they're just their own brand new uh, meaning of the card. So that's been a little bit challenging. So when you when I read with this deck, I really have to rely way more on intuition than on um, traditional meanings, and it helps it helps a whole lot to know the characters that are in the cards or the scenes that are playing out. Uh, most of the imagery or the scenes of the characters in this deck come from either the Majora's Mask game or the Ocarina of Time. It's pretty much sticks to just those two games. All right, so those are my thoughts on the Legend of Tarot deck. This is the this is the steampunk tarot. It comes with this really nice manual written by Barbara Moore, who a lot of people adore. Uh, the artwork, I love the artwork. I think the imagery is very creative and very well done and very steampunk. So if you like steampunk, I think you'll be happy with the imagery in this card. Or sorry, in this deck. Uh, I do find that many of the court cards are a little bit kind of bland. They're a little bit hard to read, but I suppose you could say the same thing about your, you know, Pamela Coleman Smith deck. Um, but overall, I really, really, really love this deck. I love the interpretations. I love the artwork. I I just really love the imagery, and I find this deck really easy to use. Again, it's pretty flimsy cardstock, your standard mass-produced Llewellyn cardstock, so don't have too much expectations there. Uh, but the artwork is really beautiful. And it sticks to a Rider Waite Smith deck pretty easily. So if you could read with a Rider Waite Smith, you can read with this deck. It's pretty on par. There's no kind of deviations or curveballs or bizarre twists. It's pretty much, pretty much the same. So I like to use this. I use this deck a lot for my personal readings when I want to go a little deeper. Um, into my own thoughts and feelings, I use this deck quite a bit, and it seems to work really well for me. Here we have the infamous Game of Thrones tarot, which people have a lot of opinions about, and since the and it came out before the series ended, and so that's changed a lot. I remember talking about this deck and wondering, you know, how I think I was mentioning it in one of my Tarot for Geeks videos that the meaning of the card that I was looking at in that video probably will change when we finally find out what happens at the end of the story. And sure enough, I, I, I feel like it has a little bit. So the deck comes with this hardcover little guidebook, which does include uh, little blurbs about the scene and references the characters and the yeah, the scene and the characters so that you know why those characters were chosen for that particular card. The backs of the card are, you know, you've got the Iron Throne, which is really nice. They are, they have this funny texture to them that I haven't ever seen in other cards. They're super flexible, like they're super bendy, uh, which I really like. I find this deck quite easy to shuffle and just, I, I really like the texture of it. I just really like it. Um, the artwork, I like the artwork. I think it's appropriate and it almost looks like, uh, you know, an altered photograph, which is fine. I have no issue with that. Um, the one thing, and of course the thing that everybody complains about this deck that I have to agree with is it is lacking a lot of characters. This deck could have been done so much better if they had included 
you know, 10 times the amount of characters. Like, there are no Baratheons at all whatsoever anywhere in this deck. There are no Baratheons. It's pretty much Starks and Lannisters and a few extra characters, and that's it. Like, it's pretty boring and dull um, in that sense when the when Game of Thrones has so many characters and they've left out so many and I think that was a a poor choice I would have paid more for this deck to have more characters in it than trying to sell a cheap deck I don't know I'm not really sure why they did it that way but it is really annoying the, the, there could have been so much more substance to this deck if they had made the decision to include more characters. It's really unfortunate. I can't say enough about that. But I do use this deck. I do find that it does work. Um, it is really fun to bring along at, to conventions and include it in the geek reading package. Uh, you do get, you know, when you're only pulling, you know, six to eight cards in a reading, you get enough variety in the characters that people don't really notice. You only really notice if you're a deck owner and you use the card frequently. Use the deck frequently. I don't know. That is just my biggest complaint. I think it could have been done so much better had they been either allowed to. I imagine it had something to do with permissions and copyright and the cost to license all those characters. I don't know. Like I said, though, I personally would have paid more for the deck if they had paid more to get the licensing. I'm assuming that's why it's so limited in its variation. It's just, it's unfortunate that that's how it happened. But I do like using this deck. That being said, I do like it. It does work. I just wish it, it was better, that's all. <laughs> this is the Justice League Tarot. And it does not come with a guidebook, which is really, really unfortunate. You have to know the DC characters uh, to really be able to read this deck. Although they are very well assigned and they do line up quite well with your traditional uh, Rider weight deck. The cardstock, and it's funny, I, it must be the same company that um, manufactured the decks because the cardstock is pretty much exactly the same as the Shadow Hunters. They're the exact same thickness, weight, texture, everything. It feels exactly the same. And you also get this sort of custom bag with each of them, um, embroidered bag. So I, I feel like they must be manufactured by the same company. <laughs> um, this one is licensed by DC. It was a limited, uh, it was only out for a limited time. I believe it is out of print now. I got lucky and found it at, online at some comic book shop that sold them online. And I got super lucky. But I see now that people are paying a pretty penny for this deck because it is. it does appear to be out of print. The artwork is great. I, I do like it. Um, I feel like the characters are well assigned. It is a really, really fun deck to work with. There's a few oddballs like this. Like, I don't know why Bane is the Ace of Pentacles. Um, I know some people had some theories online. So it's kind of nice that there is this online community to kind of share. People who might know the characters a little better than others can give some insight for sure. And there are, um, unlike Game of Thrones, which has a very limited number of characters, this one sort of swings the opposite direction, where they put some pretty obscure characters in here. Like, they have everybody's favorites, but then they have some really bizarre, like, who who is that? Like, I've used this deck for some pretty big comic book fans, and they have been stumped. They're like, I don't know, I don't know who that is. They do include a few Watchmen characters um, in here. They've got a lot of the lanterns, which is really cool. The Flash. They have villains like Rachel Ghoul here. The Scarecrow. See, this is perfect. Scarecrow for the Knight of Swords. How perfect is that? Stargirl. Cyborg. Anyway, I think this is a really fun deck. I think it was very well researched, very well done. 
Um, again, it's not really a complaint that they went out. I think it's better actually to go out and get obscure characters than leave essential characters out. So when you compare this one to the Game of Thrones, I think they did a better job with this one, especially for a licensed deck. Like, come on. And there's Harley Quinn as the fool. Just it's just so perfect. They're just so well done. So I very impressed with this. Again, it's a very thick, thick, a little bit awkward, um, very stiff deck. A shuffle. If you have the Shadow Hunters, it's pretty much exactly like that. They're very, they're exactly, exactly the same feel, weight, everything to them. Now this deck. As you can see, the back is a little bit, I don't know, I don't like that it's so branded, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a very obvious Lord of the Rings. It kind of would have been better, maybe just the rings, I don't know, I don't think, I hate it when they put logos or words on the back of cards, it just bugs me. Um, but whatever, this is a, a mass produce, this is the oldest deck, one of the oldest decks I think I own. I've had this deck since I was in high school. And the more I work with this deck, the less I like it. Um, I'm doing, as if you or you may or may not already know, that I'm doing a, ser a, t a video series called Tarot for Geeks, where I look at individual cards and compare them, those archetypes and those storylines to um, stories that you find in comic books and video games and TV and movies and and the like. And the more I play with this deck and the more I look at how the cards and the characters are assigned to each card, I just think it was very poorly done. I think their choices were not well picked. Some cards were, but I think others, it's like, why? Why why would you pick Eowyn for the High Priestess instead of Galadriel? Like, just things like that just really bug me. Now, this car, this deck is a card game as well as a tarot deck. So you can play it with friends as a game. I think the object is to get rid of the ring. If you end up with, there's a ring card, which is the Wheel of Fortune card. Um... I can't remember the rules, <laughs> but it comes with it. The rules of the game are in the little white book, and you can play it. And that's a, just a nifty kind of add-on to this deck. Kind of makes it a little bit more of a collector item. But I'm I'm not a huge fan of the artwork. I'm not a huge fan of the large borders. I don't necessarily mind that there are words on it sort of describing the scene. Sometimes I think that's actually quite helpful in giving a little more insight because one word or a phrase may jump out and adds to the meaning of the reading. But overall, I just, I like this deck less and less the more I use it. That's just my personal, personal opinion. I don't know if anyone else has this deck, please share your thoughts. Do you agree or disagree with the meanings of the cards? Do you find it easy to read with? I find it kind of, this is one of the more challenging cards I find to read. I can do it, um, but I find I struggle a little bit more. And it's not just Lord of the Rings. There are some of the, the scenes in the cards are actually from The Hobbit. So... It doesn't just stick to Lord of the Rings. I don't know why they didn't just call it the Token Tarot or something like that. Um, or Middle Earth or, you know, something like that. Rather than calling it the Lord of the Rings Tarot when it goes beyond Lord of the Rings. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on the Lord of the Rings. It's, again, your standard Llewellyn. All, although the, this is an older deck, so the, I feel like the cardstock is a little bit better than than your newer decks. This one's newer. It does feel this this card feels much thinner than this one. This one feels a little more hardy, a little more durable, longer lasting. I don't know. And it has lasted. I've like I said, I've had this this deck for probably 20 years now. <laughs> anyway, that is the Lord of the Rings.
And lastly, this is one of my newer decks. This is the Harry Potter Tarot. Again, you have to buy this from the creator. It is not properly licensed. I think she has said she's tried to get licensed but can't get through to anyone. So she's just selling them sort of underground for now. And the, there is a guidebook um, that the creator has written herself. I think it's pretty well done. She includes the, you know, what inspired her to create the cards and why she assigned that meaning to that card or that character to that card. Um, it is only available in PDF. Again, you have to download it and then you have the option to print if you like. Um, it's all in black and white. There's no color in this deck. If you are knowledgeable in your astrology, the astrological associations, all the symbols are found in the imagery somewhere. So she includes all the symbols, all the astrological associations in this deck. Like here we go. We have Jupiter, Aquarius, um, and Venus. Venus, yes. <laughs> so if you look, all the symbols are there. I know it's a little bit blurry, but that is Jupiter, Aquarius, and Venus at the top. I don't like, here's what I don't like. Now, it was the creator's decision, and she obviously has a different opinion than me, but this is her interpretation of Tonks. A lot of the other characters look like the actors in the movie. So, you know, we have Sirius Black and Hermione, and they look like Hermione and Sirius Black, and then we have Tonks. And the creator says in her blog on DeviantArt that she did this on purpose that she didn't like how it was cast in the movie. She didn't like the actress that was cast as Tonks. In her mind, reading the books first, she had a different idea of who Tonks was and what she looked like. And so this is her version of Tonks. And, you know, that is her prerogative and her, you know, creative license to do that. And I fully support artists' right to do that. However, it has thrown me and, um my clients off when the cards with tonks in them come up it's like who the hell is that <laughs> when all the other all the other characters look like the actors from the movie but it is it is a beautiful it is a beautiful deck it is it does deviate a little bit from uh, a rider weight deck but I feel like it's close enough and you get the you get a word associated with each of the pip cards so for this would be like the nine of coins for example um she's named it get the gain card or the eight of coins or pentacles is circumspection which i feel like the meaning of this card does differ quite a bit from the an eight of pentacles card um we have a deluminator here so it it definitely differs from from a right away deck so you do have there is a little bit of a learning curve but I think you get enough clues in the imagery and the symbols in the title of the cards that you can work with it and you can read with it here's McGonagall's the high priestess death is the gateway to the uh, Department of Mysteries, I think. I think that's what that was. We have Arthur Weasley as the King of Wands. The Sorting Hat, Fortune, the Wheel of Fortune. It's kind of cute. And then you have the four houses in the corners. Again, I like that. So anyway, I really like this deck. I like working with this deck. I think it's really fun. I I am okay with many of the changes, except for the tonks, but that's just me. And like I said, I, I do support an artist's creative license. If she didn't like, she's the creator. If she didn't like tonks, then she has the right to change it. It just, it, just because it's so different from the other characters I guess just that they all match the, their actors their respective actors it just 
adds an extra bit of confusion. But if you know that about the deck going in, and you can remember that this is this is the new Tonx, <laughs> then you'll be okay. I can get over it. It just it's just one thing that I wish. I wish they'd stuck with the Tonks that I know, but that's my fault for watching the movies first, I guess. All right, so that, I think, wraps up all. I think I did all 12 of my Geeky Tarot decks. If you have any questions about any of these decks, if, I, if you want to know where to get any of these decks, I'm happy to provide the links. Just shoot me uh, a message either in the comments or send me an email. I think I have all my links below in this video. And just contact me, and I'm happy to share with... Um, I'm happy to share with anyone where I find them, where I bought them, whether they're out of print or not. Let me know if you what your thoughts are on any of these decks that I have shared. Let me know in the comments what your favorites are, which ones you dislike, which ones you loathe, which ones you love. I want to hear. And if you know of any more pop culture decks, please let me know because I do collect them and I do want more. I think I'm up to date on my... Um, collection for now I haven't seen anything else that I really really want that I don't have so let me know if there's anything else out there that you think I should have and add to my collection all right I've been talking for a long time now and I'm gonna stop and so until next time guys stay shiny and keep sparkling bye